Plugin of the week is the Slate Digital EOSIS Air and Earth, or Earth and Air, uh, the way that I have them lined up here. Um, uh, the Earth and Air are uh, two new modules that uh, come from the EOSIS Air EQ. If you're familiar with that multiband EQ, uh, it gives a, a unique characteristic and some unique filter types. Uh, and it's quite an amazing, very musical sounding EQ. And so um, if you are uh, not aware, Fabrice uh, Gabriel, I believe uh, is his name, uh, is uh, also a co-owner or a partner in Slate Digital. So there's a connection there and helps a lot with the emulation. So this part is easy. Essentially, this is the extraction of the Earth uh, EQ. Uh, the air EQ and uh, the filter section. And it's quite a powerful uh, tool that you can use in a mix on individual tracks uh, and uh, anywhere you need kind of some air or some thump in something. So uh, with the earth, this would be very suitable for bass or kick drum. Uh, for the air, this might be very suitable for something like a vocal. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate it quickly here in a full mix, just so you can kind of get uh, to see its kind of impact there. But essentially what you have is uh, the earth setting, which can be taken in and out, or the air setting, which can be taken in and out, and a boost or attenuation. Um, the earth is uh, sort of described as like an adjustable transformer. Um, and it's meant to give you some of the characteristic warmth and depth uh, that you get from transformers. So transformers will create a coloration in the sound that I mostly perceive as low mid um, solidity. Uh, it really seems to form the low mids really well to me, most transformers. And the sub frequencies are also a part of that. And this is kind of where that characteristic comes from. As described and on the air side there's no description it just says it's a new filter type uh, so it's probably some variation of like a tilt EQ um, that uh, is smooth uh, so generally when you get into uh, EQs on top end they're smooth that usually means a sort of a broad Q so it's not a sharp Q it's something that will happen gradually over the course of, of a larger frequency or a broader frequency area. So I don't know all the mechanics uh, of it on the background, but it sounds damn good. So we'll take a look at it from that end. And then you have a low cut and a high cut filter. Uh, what's really cool about this, and it really makes it usable, is that you go from five cycles all the way up uh, to 10K. So that gives you a really broad range in terms of the actual filtering capabilities. And on this end, you go from 20 hertz all the way up to 30K. So what this does is it gives you a really broad range on the actual filtering, which means that you can actually use it for effects. You could use it as the front end uh, filtering on individual instruments to get rid of hum, buzz, or just to kind of create a filter effect. And I'll kind of show you some cool things that you can do with it. Now, you have a slope. Um, this is something that uh, I believe you have to right click on or, or uh, modify or some kind of modifier key click on to actually change the settings because on the actual air EQ, it gives you two settings like six or 12, but then it gives you some other options that you can go back and forth between. Uh, so this just gives you the slope in dB per octave. So that's a first order, second order, third order, fourth order, fifth order noise filters. Basically each order would be an additional 6 dB per octave. And then you also get a Q. And what this does is it allows you to create a resonance in that filter or to make it very smooth and musical sounding. So this allows you to create some variation uh, in terms of um, how it affects what it is. Are you trying to really focus something and make it kind of thump? Then go sharper. If you want something to be more smooth and filtering, that actually can work quite well for everything from mastering all the way down to individual uh, instruments. So let's take a look at this on the mix bus. I'm going to mute the vocals out here uh, so that I'm not uh, talking over uh, other vocal parts. But let's start. Uh, I'm going to take the air um, out for a second and let's just kind of focus a little bit on the earth. I'll leave the low cut filter out and let's just kind of work with things one at a time here. So So you can really hear like the the uh, the sort of thunderous low end there that it adds to the kick drum, and uh, and it's actually quite cool. It's not there's no listed frequency 
um, as he describes it, it's meant to be kind of musical um, in that it will um, not like it's a dynamic EQ. I don't get the sense that it's that, but it will actually work within the context of whatever sound you're feeding into it. Uh, which any EQ will. Of course, if you boost a particular frequency, it'll do that no matter what you feed into it. But it, it makes it sound like there's some kind of musical connection. And uh, without any other technical information, it's hard to know what that is. But it does give you a nice thud there for the low end, which can sound really powerful. In fact, when I'm... Leave it there. So this is too much, but I'm going to chase it with the filter here in a second. So let's just, uh, you know, it's kind of taking a little bit of a different direction here, but let's just kind of take it in here. And, and uh, so I'll just sweep this up. What's really cool about this, if you take the cue, sharpen it, can really dig into some of the resonances that that kind of occur there and that's like a cool way of sharpening it up so let's see if I can kind of focus what's going on with this earth here I'll keep that cue at a pretty sharp 24 dB per octave See here as I sharpen that cue, how it lifts that kick drum. So I'm trying to make it a little bit more subtle. It's easy to kind of overdo it and you can kind of hear that. And, and here it's like just sweeping that cue can change how, you know, thuddy that is. I don't know where I ended up like uh, somewhere like 39 hertz. Um, the bass is also feeding into that. So I would probably hedge lower. And know the bass player doesn't play uh, significantly low notes. And, and sometimes the thing about this is that it's probably better balanced a little bit on the top end. Uh, usually working with sub frequencies, I find that if you also work on the top end, you can help the low end to actually um, image or settle better. There's sort of a, a connection between uh, sub frequencies and uh, air or really high frequencies. Um, uh, depending upon how you want to describe, usually I think of air frequencies up pretty high, maybe a little bit higher than than some people. Uh, if you're in the, you know, 12K is kind of, to me, on the edge of air. And then as you start going up above there, 15K plus is a little bit more where you get to what I consider real air, like lifting frequencies. But this, if you kind of notice this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank in a little bit of this, and let's just see if we can focus the top end to round out the kit. So notice the focus on the low end here when I take out the air. Notice how it doesn't image as well.
And if you listen to it, like the, the low end will sink a little bit lower. And this is like not a lot, you know, 1.6 dB there, 2.17 dB. I could also focus this, t this top end, that's 1K by the way. And here, with sharpening the Q, I can kind of find a, um, I can find a sort of peak area in there on the drums. There's like about 16.5, and then I could kind of back it up. So it's like a way of like a, a little bit of a pointer, almost a, a, by sharpening the Q, you can really focus in on that top end frequency. It like hyper focuses it, almost like soloing it, like you can do on some EQs, and then. Uh, and then you can kind of back off with it a little bit. Let's listen to all that together. I'm going to smooth that up a little bit. So it's kind of a weird thing to think like, you know, normally people sort of, you know, don't like this idea of cutting high frequencies on things. Yet when you set it up right, the high frequencies, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot more going on there in the symbols in terms of the air above 16.5. But when you filter down that, it kind of focuses it, especially if I if I change the slope and increase the slope here, it'll focus the top end of the kit and almost make it sound brighter. Uh, as I'm going up, even though I, I'm actually taking away more frequencies at a sharper at a sharper slope, and this is like a a, a kind of um, a misunderstanding of the way that frequencies work, and uh, this idea that uh, because a lot of what happens in that upper area there can sometimes be very noisy and kind of take away from the detail. It's almost like a haze or a fog that can sometimes occur over the the uh the high end where there's just so much stuff going on that it becomes kind of annoying and so the filter actually allows you to still hear those frequencies pretty clearly but it sort of you know it lessens the amount of them um and makes them then more focused up to that point like kind of sharpening the edges instead of having a fuzzy uh top end there So notice how more focused that top end is there. Now, of course, with the 60 dB per octave, it's going to extend lower. Because that's kind of part of the the uh, thing there that um, that crossover point or that frequency is not where the filtering actually stops or starts. Excuse me. Uh, it uh, usually ends up being like a three dB point. And depending upon the design of the filter, if you're going at a more dramatic cut, uh, that you know that may scale down even further. Um, you know some of these things. You could go to what the original, the way they sort of define filters and what frequency is the actual frequency for parametrics is very simple. It's just right the dead center frequency. But when you start to get into shelving EQs, it's a 3 dB point plus minus uh, and a similar type of thing with filters. Um, but that point may change depending upon the order of filter and the design of it. I think I even saw a thing on an EQ that actually puts the frequency at the crossover point, at the point where it would start to attenuate. So you can design it whatever way you want once it's in plug-in form. So without doing a lot there, I can open up the drums there a little bit. And, uh, and what I'll do here is I'm just going to copy this uh, over to, uh, to here. And let's just do it kind of on an individual thing. So I'll just reset these guys, go back to a default setting here. 
which is off. And then maybe we can focus the, gu the guitars here a little bit. And this is something where, you know, if I... where I can really cut a little bit lower. But with a sharper cue to kind of really focus it. So the guitars have an artificial brightness, but also also a clarity in there. I'm not going to put any air EQ on this. Uh, I'm curious to hear. <laughs> not quite enough there for that to grab onto. Uh, but let's focus. Let's do a similar thing. See if I can find a bottom end bump on. Right, so you could start to hear it there, like really resonate there, like right around 80 hertz. I'm gonna leave that at a softer cue. Let's listen to that in the context. Listening to this, I'm going to uh, soften up that that top on the cymbals, and then let's leave a little bit of a space here for the vocals. And so I'll add the vocals in. So maybe it's a little bit better to do it this way. Originally, I was just going to do it on the mix bus, so it's a little bit longer demo, but at least to get a better idea of what this is. And I can go back to the default to just kind of reset these guys. I can do that from here, but... Every time I see it, I wonder where you are And The here. things that made me laugh now, they make me cry Let me see if I can focus that top end there I miss the way I felt looking in your eyes So I keep looking around with my eyes on the ground Confidence, I know I dropped I keep retracing my steps Going through the events Trying to find out when the love stopped And just like an assassin In the heat of the moment All right, so let's do a, a little bump there on the low end Again, probably not going to be doing a lot of earth there Do you know how many people own your car? Again, here the the cue I can kind of Every focus. Every time I see it, I wonder where you are. The things that made me laugh now they make me cry. I miss the way I felt looking in your eyes. All right, so there's a there's a little bit of a thing here, and that's kind of. Do you know how many people own your car? But it's not a lot. It's not gonna because it's just it's more Every high end. I, I wonder where you are. So this should give a little bit the of a things resonance. That made me laugh, now they make me cry. Just to fill out the voice in a subtle way here. I miss the way I felt looking in your eyes. So I keep looking around.
And, and I think you can really hear um, when you start to, to work with it on that top and bottom, the way that you focus, it's almost like putting borders on, on the sounds and, um, and the thickness of that border ends up being a lot of the ripple that you can create or the resonance you can create with the cue and the way that you shape it and then how radical you shape it. And this allows you to focus areas and in, in none of those cases where you're filtering off high frequencies, does it ever sound um, like there's less top end going on? And that's kind of the, you know, as you start to sweep down lower in frequency, of course, it's going to happen. Or if you start to soften the filter, then what happens is it's going to start to warm up the sound. Like uh, I think uh, here on the top end with the guitars, uh, I could warm up the guitars by pulling back on that cue on the top end. And that'll extend the filter down uh, a little bit farther. So it affects more higher, you know, higher uh, frequencies. And that may help to, to kind of stabilize things. But really 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 cool modules here um also um this is different uh, i know some people have uh also because one of the things you think about is like well how is this different than like the uh lift series or something like that and uh it's just different um and uh maybe the best way to put it is like there are many companies that create different compressors or different eqs and they all have a unique characteristic sound uh some uh, more obvious than others and uh, in their own unique designs, you get a different coloration. So maybe the best example is, you know, um, uh, when working with this, if you're working generically just with stock plugins in a DAW, you might just have an eight crayon box uh, for for working with your sounds. But, you know, if you want it, then you start adding in plugins. And so now you have 16 crayons or different colors and 32 different colors or 64 different colors. And so the more different things that you kind of add in, you, you get lots of different shades of any particular color. And that's kind of what ends up happening um, when you start working with different EQs. And the more that you start to understand that and the way that those kind of things work together and the more sensitive, the more you use them, then the, the more you might look and say, hey, for this, the lift is going to give me something different than what the air EQ is going to different uh, give me and, and go to that as a unique coloration. So, uh, very cool. Anyway, um, that's a, a really excellent, nice nice addition to uh, the uh, Slate um, uh, virtual mix rack uh, and a collection of plugins. And it is the plugin of the week, Slate Digital Eosis Air and Earth.